Ray, you ready? For a I'm great ready. Talk? Wonderful. Are you um, going to click through for me? Sure, absolutely. Let's get this going. All right, great. Um, welcome everybody to our partner spotlight, Avant Partner Spotlight on May 3rd. Um, I will go into introducing the man of the hour as soon as I go through some announcement regarding Avant. But first, my name is Banna Cashew and I'm the Senior Director of Sales for the East Coast for Avant. For those of you that I don't know that are here, so welcome. We do, we haven't stopped since April 1, since we've worked from home and it's and we're not showing signs of stopping as we continue to bring state-of-the-art events, but we always wanna hear from you too, so please provide us with feedback. Um, upon the completion of the spotlight, you will receive a survey. Um, so should there be any topics that we should be covering that we're not, please voice your opinion. But here's what we have coming up. Our, on August 4th, we have our Pathfinder Spotlight. Those have been phenomenal as we continue to grow and expand our Pathfinder. Um, you will note so many great changes that enable you as a sales, as a sales partner, as a trusted advisor to a lot of the CIOs out there um, to show them and visually show them the products and services and solutions that you have to offer. So make sure that you join these spotlights. We do add something new somehow, some way every month. Next slide, please. We have on August 11th, our tier point spotlight. So um, make sure you, you check in and, and see what's going on with tier point. I will tell you one of my predictions that I've talked to partners on the East Coast frequently about is the fact that we may have done the save um, money on connectivity and voice, but the time has come to have the cloud conversation also and talk about the hyperscalers and discuss some of the colo, um, the colo, uh, what are the words I'm trying to use in terms of, uh, forget it. Co-location and cloud are your next wave. And so please tune into what's going on with TierPoint as I know they have a lot of products and services. Not only that, they have a lot of assessments that you can bring to the table and bring to your customers to make them cloud ready. So tune in. August 13th, because we can't stop, won't stop, we have our battle briefing with our unified communications as a service. Uh, kind of an important topic, especially right now with all the um, heated conversations that people are having around Teams and what Microsoft has to offer and all the different service providers that are adopting teams. What, what does that mean for your business? So tune into the battle briefing and understand from providers that are in the field that are seeing it every day with their customers to learn more. And then finally, a program that's very near and dear to my heart. You guessed it. For those of you that have known me for a long time, know that I'm very passionate about this because it doesn't just affect us from a business perspective, but from a mental health perspective. And the fact that we've all been behind this computer for 12 to 14 hour days, I want you to challenge yourself to get uncomfortable if it makes you uncomfortable. For some of us, this is a hurrah, a day off, to just join in the conversation on how being a conscious leader will actually enhance your staff experience, your customer experience, will give you the innate ability to increase productivity by just engaging in very simple um, practices, if you will, and engaging in habits that will change your culture forever. And we have guarantees Robin Sharma is an international best-selling author. He's spoken to executive um, groups such as IBM and uh, Microsoft. He has a whole slew list of clients. So what better than the channel to start talking and having the conversation around conscious leadership, especially in an overcharged environment right now, whether negative or positive or where you stand. In addition to that, we have an international yogini. She actually sells her DVDs through Target and otherwise. So very well known, Shiva Ray. You know what? You don't want to do the yoga? Don't do the yoga. We have an entire schedule. But we met with Shiva yesterday. It was such a pleasure to see her. And she's going to do something 
some breathing exercises and techniques that you can actually do at your desk. So you may think it's a bunch of woo-hoo, but woo-hoo is gonna get us through this COVID situation. So get registered for the Conscious Leadership Summit. If you have more questions, let me know. We have sponsors that actually engage in conscious leadership for their staff and their teams, and they're gonna show us and tell us during the summit how it's changed their culture. So without further ado. Now, ben, gonna... I commend you on doing the socially responsible and spiritually responsible event, but I would like to talk instead about spiritual health and wellness about how to make money. Do you mind if we get into that a little bit? Absolutely. So we're going to talk about that coming up next with Ray Watson, a man of the hour, a man that does not need and has been a friend of Avant for a very long time. He's the VP of technology at Maysergy. He's phenomenal. If you haven't seen him in, in, or heard his podcast, so make sure you tune in or follow him on Twitter on Ray Redacted but he focuses on software defined networks and cybersecurity solutions to multinational corporations. And he's done it for a very long time. And quite frankly, I appreciate Ray because he speaks in normal people terms and not, um, I don't wanna insult anybody, but not so much on an engineering perspective, but something you and I can take to the table. So in addition to the numerous industry certifications he's held over the last 22 years of his experience in preventing and mitigating the attacks of cyber um, criminals, hacktivist groups, and nation state actors. He frequently teaches about advanced security and networking for global corporations, as well as federal and international law enforcement. Um, so Ray is the host of Tribe of Hackers prod podcast and is featured in the Tribe of Hackers Security Leaders book. So. He's been on our team for 11 years, and Ray, I'm looking forward to this conversation and showing us how we're gonna make money through your new Zenith program. Awesome, well I hope the uh, hot studio lights don't show me blushing after that introduction, but I would be amiss if I didn't tell you to also, please follow Macer G and Macer G Partners. Those are two different accounts. Please follow Macer G Partners, both on LinkedIn and Twitter uh, as well, because I did not realize you were gonna plug my, uh, my personal account. But uh, anyway, so let's talk about what we're gonna do today, right? Um, first and foremost, I wanna talk a little bit about some additional channel investments that we've been making uh, very recently and we're continuing to do that. The meat of what we're gonna talk about today is around SD-WAN 3.0, including bring your own network and co-management. I'm gonna talk about some kick-ass SLAs. I mean, these SLAs are so good that the people that have called from the press actually thought there might be typos or something in them. And we're gonna go through those and talk about how that can actually get attention for you to get deals. SLAs will never win deals, but they can certainly grab people's attention. Finally, I'm gonna talk about some three times, three X promotions. And then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a PlayStation 5 that is coming out and I'm actually uh, giving away my own personal pre-reserved one, which will be manufactured in Japan and will have a day one serial number under 10,000. So that is the plan uh, for today. So for those of you that don't know, Macer G has a significant additional and ongoing investment in Team Avant, in the channel in general. We are 100% focused on your success, on everyone's success. So what I'm gonna do now, before we get too energetic, is I'm gonna let all 27 people introduce themselves very, very slowly and give you their background. Brian? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We're absolutely not gonna do that uh, under any circumstances. Um, but I do wanna give a special welcome out there to Jim Glacken. He joined us, he's now part of the team, he's now leading the channel efforts and most of you will be very excited to see that he's a big part of this. We also have a ton of engineering resources, uh, a ton of marketing collateral, a very, very significant amount of marketing investment being led by Florence the Goff, uh, also with the national channel directors of John Boggan and Chris Legalouche, and then just a ton of support. Now, I didn't even put myself on here, but I'm also available to you for deals, especially if it'll help you get that PlayStation 5, uh, which I already told my wife I gave away. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's really about the channel expansion. But here's the other thing. What we're also doing 
is we're bringing some big things in regards to SD-WAN 3.0. Now, Macergy does UCAS and CCAS. We do it really, really well with one of the best net promoter scores in the industry. We do cybersecurity services that absolutely blow the doors off of a lot of other providers that try to integrate solutions. But today is all about SD-WAN. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're bringing you more ways to sell it, multiple management options, uh, sassy architecture. We're putting some killer SLAs on multi-cloud. And by the way, multi-cloud is defined as when a company has multiple connections to like Amazon and Google. It's not hybrid, which is public-private, although it could be hybrid and multi-cloud. But that's a really big part, including in the post-pandemic world, is really being able to serve multi-cloud with guarantees. And then we're talking about providing unprecedented service level agreements. And ultimately what this is really comes down to is we're taking all of the components that people talked about our SD-WAN today as, and we're enhancing it, we're amplifying it by adding over the top, bring your own network, uh, and, and customer access to the SD-WAN orchestrator, the SASE side, killer multi-cloud, and then the biggest headline of all, the service level agreements, okay? The disruptive uh, SLAs. But what it really also is about, Banna, is it's about widening the aperture. Now, historically, Macergy with SD-WAN, we were somewhat of a focus player on the area all the way on the left, okay? We really did good for mid to large enterprises that were focused on performance and that wanted to do digital transformation. What we're now doing is we're significantly expanding the types of deals you can sell, including true co-managed, the, the industry's first true co-managed, uh, over the top, meaning that they have all ISPs, 20 locations, 20 ISPs, no major G circuits at all, and even bring your own network. They are currently under contract with another carrier. It's not going well. They want someone to take it over and make it all work. The only thing we don't do now is if the customer absolutely wants to do it themselves, and we've all seen how well that goes. So this is a significant expansion of the types of solutions that you can bring uh, customers. Banner, do you have any questions about this? I do actually. Sense? I want to, I, I have a couple, you know, first and foremost, for those that are on the call that don't understand what SASE is as the latest acronym, can we cover that for them? And then can you cover and let us know how and how and why has it become so hot in the industry right now? And, yeah, and for sure. We're going to get into SASE uh, in just, just a minute. That's actually probably three slides away. Oh, I think always, you're just, <laughs> jumping ahead. Okay, no worries. Well, so the biggest question uh, on this slide is, well, wait a minute, Ray. Matrix has always been this super duper expensive premium product that was really, really, really good, but focused almost exclusively on large global companies. Aren't you kind of going down market with this representation? Isn't that kind of what's happening? Well, I have an analogy for you. And it's one that many of you will relate to. About 12 years ago, Tesla launched a $150,000 performance sedan along with a Roadster with the full intent of eventually selling a car for $30,000, $20,000, and even $18,000 eventually. It ultimately was about taking something that was super high performance and making it available to the masses. And with the launch of the Model 3 and the Model Y, and now they're launching a semi truck pickup truck. This is widening the aperture for the types of deals that you can sell with Macergy. And the Tesla analogy is really, really applicable for us because they do software updates over the air, right? Purely software defined. Uh, they are, they are, have extreme value. Disruptive technology, right? It's pure electric. You can't put gasoline in a Tesla. There's some funny pictures out there on Instagram of people trying to stick gasoline or looking for the gas cap, uh, by the way. But this is the big one. Look at the third point here. The experience has always been expensive but worth it. Now we're talking about extreme value with an entire range of options. So the world is your oyster around this for voice, for SD-WAN, for uh, managed security, for any other type, because we're now going to be network agnostic, and we can let the customer either be fully managed, co-managed, or mix it up a little bit, too. And by the way, we're putting guarantees on everything, okay? The guarantees are a little bit different, 
for Bring Your Own Network versus OTT versus HA on Maestrogy, but we guarantee absolutely every product that we have, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. So this is a significant change, okay? This is an exciting and significant change, and of course, it's highlighted by the fact that now, whereas before you could only talk to customers that were out of contract or about to be out of contract, now you could do pure over the top, okay, uh, with or without bringing your own network. So they could have their own MPLS network, their own frame relay, net frame relay network. They could, have, they could have 20 ISPs. They could have two carriers. They could have Metro Ethernet. We're still going to come in and provide artificially intelligent, artificial intelligence powered uh, service controls and metrics, and we're still going to provide it as a managed service across the board. So you don't have to wait until people are out of contract to start building solutions. And this also includes significant enhancements on what some people call work from home, but we call work from anywhere. Because in the reality is, in the post-COVID world, you might be working in a quarantined WeWork cubicle that's like that's been sanitized. You might be working in your car, right? Working from anywhere. And we're putting SLAs on the network performance to the cloud providers when you're working from home, which is absolutely unheard of. So we've got a really big widening of this and all of it has SLAs. So I have a question for you, Ray, from a sales partner perspective. I'm listening to this. This is amazing. One of the things that differentiated Maester G was it was, and it continues to be the Tesla, and now it's an affordable Tesla at the same value. But having said that, why did Maester G make that change? And what impacts do you see on the market? Um, and I do have some follow-up questions to this slide itself when it comes to the technology portion of it, but. Okay, so just like Tesla, it was always our plan to build out the world's first software-defined network and eventually expand it to cover all enterprises. We have no plans to do residential, none, zero, right? But this is the way that we're actually making it so that you can now go after those other folks. And by the way, the test example is interesting because the Model Y, even though it's like $75,000 less expensive than the Model X, it's getting way better reviews, right? It's off the charts better just because of the fact that sometimes, you know, you don't necessarily need all the bells and whistles. But the other part of that, Banna, is when a customer comes to us with a bring your own network side, uh, let's take a look at the private data center on the bottom left of this diagram. If they allow me to take over those circuits or bring in my own fiber or bring in uh, a fiber that I procure, I'm actually going to be able to give them incredibly better SLAs. Because as long as that circuit is managed and owned by somebody else, okay, and it wasn't ordered by me, I didn't get an LOA or anything else like that, I can only guarantee the part that's under my control, which totally makes sense. Okay, and You'll see why in my very last slide, because we're doing something ridiculous with regards to credits. but. There will be an incentive for customers once they kind of get the taste of Tesla to suddenly want to buy more Teslas, right? That's ultimately the justification for it. And we think uh, our results so far show that it absolutely uh, is a way to get your foot in the door, kind of plant the flag because a lot of folks may have not heard of us before and get comfortable with the portal, with the uh, account interaction, with project management, all those things that people always have questions about up front. So uh, in follow up to that, and because we have so many partners on this call today that are very curious about how Maestrgy's SD-WAN 3.0 product is orchestrated, um, I have twofold questions. Okay. One, I'm a partner that I've worked with G only when it came to enterprise accounts. Okay. What would you say my next step should be after we hang up the phone today or turn off the Zoom um, in terms of working directly with the partner manager within Maestrgy's ecosystem to get recharged, re-engaged because of your bring, bring your own network, new design, it's, it's a newish design. Okay, can I get the second question? Because uh, I might answer them out of order. <laughs> okay, the second question is, can we do security with bring your own network through Maestrgy today and what are those security services look like? Okay. Because you're talking about a third party managing the bandwidth, so. For sure, for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna do those out of order. 
Um, on That's the security funny. question, the second question, yeah. you absolutely can. We can enhance and turn up Maceo G's uh, MSSP services on anybody's network. A 5G, Starlink, satellite, if it's a telegram, if it's passing IP packets, I can secure that for you, right? But we all know that security sales are a lot more complicated than simply saying, here's security, here's the price, right? You really have to understand what the business outcomes are and do a full assessment because it's not a binary, right? But we absolutely can provide real-time analytics, artificial intelligence, the machine learning, network behavioral analytics, IDS, IPS, I can do threat intelligence, I can crawl the dark web looking for people selling your data, I can crawl the dark web looking for fake domains, I can help you with phishing, all of that, right, is designed to help customers that already have some stuff in place that's not working that well, regardless of the network side. Now, with regards to how do you energize the partners and yeah. the enterprise customers, I'm going to table that until we get to the SLAs. Because I think the SLAs is a fantastic way to lead into any of these opportunities. And I think it'll make sense when we get there. Okay. Sounds fair. Sounds perfect. Awesome. awesome. Okay. So in, in addition to that, in addition to that, um, Maestro has been recognized as a visionary for four years in a row by Gartner. Uh, I actually prefer Avant Analytics. So shout out to the 612 Report and Ken Presti and his podcast if he's out there. <laughs> but people do read Gartner, right? And the one, thing the, that, the one thing that Gartner said about us last year, which uh, kind of irritated me, but we, we, knew, we, we knew it was incorrect, but we were going to fix it, is that Major G's multi-cloud offering guaranteed performance to four providers, okay, four with SLAs. So what we're doing now is we're taking that to 200, 200 SaaS providers, including Salesforce, Concur, uh, even even things like that you wouldn't even think of, like Discord, Equinix, you name it. If we can put it on Maestro G Private Interconnects, right, we're going to put guarantees of 100% availability, including home workers. Okay, Anyone who's on the Maestro G SSL VPN, if you're on my cloud, it is my responsibility to make sure that that connection works. Now, keep in mind that home worker also will be able to access things over the public Internet. But the part on my core has sub one millisecond jitter. Absolutely unheard of once you hit, hit the secure, and Maestro G Secure Edge Network. And we've actually renamed core the Secure Edge Network to highlight the fact that this is actually the edge to so much, to branch offices, to mobile workers, but especially to those cloud providers. And we all know that nobody is building standalone data centers anymore. Drew and I were talking about that five years ago, right? People are moving workloads to AWS and Microsoft and 365, but they're not just going to one. They're always going to multiples, right? And that's a big challenge for a lot of folks, you know, with regards to shadow IT and data integrity, lots of things that we can help with uh, regardless of who they actually pick. And if you bring me one that I've never heard of before, I can still build into that and give you guarantees around it. So no. if you want to go to Microsoft, you could do that yourself, right? You can do it yourself. If you want to go to Amazon, you can, you can try to deal with that way or go over the public internet. We're talking about a white glove service with guarantees. You answered my question. I was going to ask if you're managing those interconnects. And um, what percentage of the traffic today goes through that? Yes, I can't actually legally get into the total percentages, but I will tell you it grew by 800% in the last two years. In the last two years. Since COVID, it's gone up 1,600% because everybody is accessing those cloud workloads from, from remote workers. And we had a huge flood of VPN users as well, right, which we actually helped out with during that, that part. But all network designs and all network solutions now have to face the reality that in the post-COVID world, okay, most of the people that are working from home, almost 60%, are not going to go back to an office full-time, right? Uh, knowledge workers simply won't do it. Regardless of a vaccine or anything else, right? People have now realized, hey, our workers are still very productive. And despite the fact that this isn't really work from home because your kids are there, right? I mean, this is not the true work from home means that you don't have to deal with childcare. I don't want to get political though. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I was going to put you on mute, but I didn't. <laughs> No, so it goes back to my intro at the beginning where people are going to look at data center consolidations and have those conversations. 
it's a good time to interject and talk about the interconnects that now Maester G offers, especially with the 200 solution providers. Back to you, Ray. Yes, so now we're gonna talk about SASE, right? And SASE is white hot as an acronym. It is the latest, hottest buzz, but it actually consists of a secure access service edge, right? But the main components to it are what's in the top blue, right? Obviously, we do SD-WAN. We already do secure web gateway. We have firewall as a service we have for like six or seven years. We have a CASB solution today that's automated that absolutely works with regards to cloud access security brokers. So if we catch unauthorized traffic going to Amazon, if you use us for CASB, we can isolate and even stop that traffic. For example, if somebody in your company is putting personal data out there that they shouldn't, and also that zero trust network. Now, one of the things that's interesting about SASE is it has an awesome role to play, but it is not a universal solution. It's not a panacea, I think is the SAT word around that, right? Because there's still a very big need for true unified threat management in the office or in the home even, right? So putting everything cloudified and actually doing everything virtual and up in the cloud absolutely makes sense for a lot of workloads, but there will still be a need for either physical or NFV virtual uh, security services in the prem. And the reason I know that is because even on our SASE deployments, we still put probes in the customer's data centers, in the customer's major locations. And the reason that we do that, a couple different reasons, but primarily is to monitor uh, for any anomalous traffic on the security side, right? So you, you really do need to be able to monitor east, west, in addition to north, south, right? But in the case of NFV, it's actually a branch inside the branch that you have to watch for too. So SASE is ex incredibly exciting and we are thrilled to be bringing to market a solution that covers those functions as well as the network functions, but we are not going to deprecate or push away the fact that there are some customers that still need unified threat management at their branches. So how do you identify when SASE is applicable? If I'm talking to a customer that may deploy multinational networks and is looking, especially with a name like SASE, <laughs> Yeah, so, well, first, first of all, the name is actually somewhat of a pun because most people know the word SaaS, meaning like software as a service, right? Yeah. And it was sort of a play on that side. But uh, the, the way you do is via discovery, right? So the Maser G engagement model has never changed. We are about design, designing for business outcomes and solving for application performance, period. We don't believe that any IT organization can function whatsoever. It doesn't matter if they've got 40 gigabit fiber to every office. If their applications suck, if the user experience for the applications isn't good and you can't control that, it's not going to be successful. So we build SASE, non-SASE, SD-WAN, MPLS, VPLS, all of those services around what are your applications and how can we guarantee that they, that they perform. And by the way, this is not something new, right? Uh, we've been doing this for 20 years. For 20 years, We've been providing layer seven visibility, even on layer two networks, right? Real-time controls, real-time guarantees, and even QoS on layer two networks, uh, as well as layer three, every aspect of the stack. But what we're obsessed with, and Avant is as well, is layer seven. That's our obsession. And the reason why is because that's how IT decision makers are judged. How do the applications perform? And so I encourage partners that are on the call today to go back to your channel managers in the field and do some account mapping because customers are shopping. And the beauty about Avant is that we do have the analytics and the insights into what your customers are shopping for. So should you need that information in regards to what's happening in the industry, we already plugged Ken Presti, our, our uh, resident research and analytics genius, Einstein. But we also have other tools and resources that will help you walk through some of these qualifying and discoveries. But again, I always urge to go to the regional channel managers at Macergy to ensure that you're account mapping and you're not leaving anything on the table. And security is such a hot topic right now um, with everybody working from home. So and I'm a big fan of Pathfinder. That fiber locator tool itself is just absolutely incredibly awesome. And it typically will tell you 
uh, which providers have the best strengths and weaknesses, so to speak. Now, I'm a little bit, tiny bit biased because I actually have a lot of solutions that are one-offs that are designed to be customized for customers, and it's kind of hard to catch those in Pathfinder, right? But at the very minimum, it can start dialogues and discussions. Sassy, non-sassy, UTM, non-UTM, SSL VPNs, remote workers, 5G, satellite, all of that is your oyster. Okay? We can build solutions inclusive of all of that. And one of the things that we did last year, so Tesla is constantly pushing new features to the cars. Like sometimes you just get in the car, suddenly there's a new video game on it. I'm not kidding. They actually push new video games or a new enhancement to the lane change or something like that. Well, we do the same thing. And one of those we did last year was launching a shadow IT discovery service that if you haven't seen it, I highly encourage you to schedule a demo. Our solutions engineers are thrilled to show you this as well as the AI ops side. But this absolutely gives a customer real-time visibility to all unauthorized applications and then gives them a risk score of how risky each one of those is. Okay, we have 4,000 applications we're classifying. I don't know if you guys know about TikTok, but TikTok has been banned uh, in a lot of corporations and a lot of government folks. A lot of politicians are now banning it. There's a lot of reasons why, but I won't get into that unless you want to listen to the podcast. But it's been ranked now as a risk four, right? Because of some of the exfiltration sides around it. Believe it or not, Zoom for two weeks uh, went from being perfectly safe to being rated as a two. That was all because of an RCE exploit. So this is built in the portal and it's free. Okay, this is a free enhancement that we rolled out to our customers, including historic data, and then we're working with them uh, to optimize it and specify it for them. Now, the other half of this, okay, the other thing that we did last year without charging our customers that's absolutely killer is we rolled out AI ops. Now, that's artificial intelligence ops. We now have network engineers. Oh, before you go into that, right, and I don't mean to, you spoke about... TikTok, you mentioned other applications that seem to be trendy, including, I can't speak to Zoom as they changed already, their security platform. Oh, they've done great. But they've done great in response. Can you speak to the benefits of shadow IT discovery and why you should present it to your customers today in the field? Oh, that's uh, easy. That's easy. First of all, every company that I've ever shown this to, they're shocked at how many of these there are that they didn't know about. Most companies are aware of nine or 10 of these, but most companies run hundreds of actual applications that are exfiltrating data, which the only reason that's a problem, right, is because it's involved in two thirds of all data breaches. Two thirds of all data breaches have some aspect of unauthorized IT at the root of the cause, right? The classic example is somebody in a company starts sending documents via Box or Dropbox or you know whatever it is that's not their authorized one, or they spin up an AWS instance with customer data uh, leave an S3 bucket open. This will catch all of that. And by the way, we also tell you who it is. So if it's the CEO that is posting documents via Dropbox to his wife or something, you can treat that differently than if it's a, a manager or a director or even a, a frontline employee, right? Because we've got that identity enhancement as well. As long as we can tie into their AD or their identity services, we can tell you that part too. So this is really just about increasing security posture managing your bandwidth better. And in the post COVID world, it's also about the fact that your home workers in many cases are accessing corporate resources from machines that are not corporate machines. And we wanna make sure that that is segmented, that that's bifurcated so that you're not being, you're not connected to some Chinese website that's got a keylogger on while you're also typing into a terminal emulator for your company. So this is just a, a big enhancement around security. And my favorite part of all about this is it, it costs nothing. If you're, a, if you're a secure SD-WAN customer of ours, we built this in and we rolled it out very quietly and started showing you some of the things that you should do from a security posture side. Now, a lot of companies will see this and go, you know what, just, just, just fix it for me. Just, just, just handle all the fours and fives. And we can absolutely do that. We can even do the CASB side too. So there is some upsell opportunity to it. I mean. I'll be really upfront about it because we're giving them data that will encourage them to use more of our services. But even the data itself is very, very useful. Do you have visibility into the rest of the household? So I've got two kids in high school. I don't literally, but if I did, they're obsessed with TikTok or God knows what else is going to come out soon. Yeah. So this, that, that is an interesting question because okay. I can't do anything 
about the Fortnite bandwidth in your house, right? Okay, I, can't do, I can't do anything about that. Yeah. But we do have some additional solutions that will guarantee segmentation. And we've had customers already ask us to bring in circuits, either DIA or even actual like circuit circuits so that they can get away from their kids side, uh, their, their kids traffic. Now you can actually segment that yourself and we can yeah. talk you through how to do that, but that's not a service that we sell. Okay. Uh, there is a lot of discussion about do we want to ship a small SD-WAN device to people's homes? Uh, would they would they be willing to deploy that and get full segmentation away from their, their Alexa traffic, for example? Sure, sure. All right, I won't interrupt anymore. No, 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 that's totally good. That's okay. <laughs> so that's the shadow IT side, okay? The other enhancement last year is we launched AI Ops, which is artificial intelligence operations. This is literally a virtual network engineer that operates on the customer's behalf, opens tickets, troubleshoots, makes predictions, enhances their DevOps, and is faster than humans. And we rolled it out, and I would say it's probably the equivalent of a teenager right now, but it was a toddler three months ago. So the rate of acceleration and complexity around AI Ops is just growing at a faster and faster and faster rate. And what this does for customers, as well as our NOC, is it becomes a force multiplier. So suddenly your IT team that looks like it has four people, suddenly looks like it has 40 people. Now today, the AI agents can make recommendations, but they're not making autonomous actions, okay? We're, we're treading very carefully about that. We first went back to all historic tickets and taught the AI which tickets were resolved correctly, what the issue was, so that it could get smarter and smarter over time. Eventually, our customers will get a notice from the virtual employee, from the AI. By the way, they don't call in sick, okay? They don't, they don't go on vacation, and it'll say things like, I noticed the QoS is misconfigured. I could take this action with your approval. Press one for yes, two for no, and three to snooze, right? Or it might integrate with Slack or Microsoft Teams so that the difference in interaction between a real knock employee and an AI knock employee is only the fact that there's an asterisk and an AI by the name. That's it, okay? We're talking about getting to the point where we have full autonomous networking. We're on our third step of a five-step program to get there but eventually the AI will be smart enough to do full chatbot functionality, even voice tickets, right, that are out there actually talking to, et cetera, and the network will simply heal itself. It will oh. not be a manual process to keep networks humming. And guess what? Our entire goal will be application performance. So we can do things like make predictions based on DNS issues around Cloudflare, for example, or any major news events or weather events. Right? So we can actually do that today with humans, but the AI is getting better and better at that. And this is really, really exciting and really, really, really cool, but it's only going to get better over time. Do you I'll have you, a lot of customers today on the AI ops or no? Every single customer I have now has this. Every single oh, one. That's great. And what's the feedback then? Well, so the number one thing that it reports is bandwidth utilization because most of our customers have that bandwidth on demand where they turn it up and turn it down, right? So that it's not a big deal if they're actually using that, but it will make predictions over time. Uh, when COVID first happened, the AI was particularly concerned because it looked like office traffic was suddenly dropping, <laughs> which it was, right? But SSL traffic was going way up almost to the point where it looked like exfiltration, but it picked up and learned that. And the biggest thing of all about this is we went back in history and looked at how long it took us to fix problems, whether the AI could have fixed it for us, and made some predictions that will now allow us to go forth in the market in the middle of a pandemic and announce these absolutely bonkers SLAs, okay? Here's the catch, 100% site level guarantee Okay, so if you have an HA location, regardless of the circuits, if I certify it as HA, you get credits. It's 100% by site, not by circuit, by site. It will always be there. The cloud service availability. And, and remember, remind me what HA stands for? A high availability, meaning oh, you've got gotcha. highly redundant okay. circuits or highly redundant equipment, power. Sub one millisecond jitter on the core, always proactive notifications. But the killer, killer part of all is we're going to do it proactively. So if you have an SLA issue, we don't wait for you to tell us and then deal with it, et cetera. We're gonna actually issue credits without you ever even asking. So it's gonna appear there. And now let me tell you something. Most carriers will only do that for customers that spend five million or more a month. 
the reason why is because most people don't bother chasing them down. Most people don't want credits, but they definitely want a provider that has skin in the game. So the second that there's an issue or an impairment, we're actually paying that out proactively. And this is an industry first, and it's available right now for uh, new SD-WAN customers. Now, these enhancements for SLAs are absolutely disruptive. No one is doing this in the middle of a pandemic. Everyone else is kind of puckering up and just trying to weather the storm, so to speak, right? But we actually have bigger plans to expand a lot of these to other products as well. SD-WAN 3 was the first big launch. The feedback has been phenomenal from both the press and the analysts and everything else. And I really can't say any more about that besides watch this video. Nasergy SD-WAN Secure Portfolio. For businesses of all sizes, not just a one size fits all. Nasergy now offers a fully managed or co-managed SD-WAN solution. On Nasergy's high performing software defined network, pure broadband or any third party network all with enhanced cybersecurity services utilizing next-gen firewalls. Nasergy is the only pure end-to-end -end software defined network globally and has the essential built-in SASE capabilities. We also offer unprecedented SLAs, giving you the broadest choices in SD-WAN delivery and management. With expanded multi-cloud connectivity, making it easy to access cloud providers and SaaS apps with guaranteed performance. One window into the whole of your network, giving you real-time monitoring, analytics, and AI ops acting as your virtual network engineer. All this with guaranteed availability and low latency. Masergy is SD-WAN. I think we're gonna have to watch that again. <laughs> Woo. All right, cool. Awesome. Um, before I get to the spiffs and the incentives, do you have any questions? I know we've got some questions from the audience. We're going to get to those in just a second. Hey, we have one here. In order to provide proactive credits, does the customer have to have all G connectivity and does it have to be HA design? Yeah, so that's a great question. So there is a hierarchy of what I can proactively credit around. If I procure the circuit, if I go buy it, okay, even if it's a broadband or it's a, a, a DIA from somebody else, right, then I can put guarantees around it, right? If you bring it yourself and it's crappy and you have me take it over, then no, I can't proactively credit that at all. I can only control the parts that my knock has access to. Now you could give us an LOA on some of those, right? That's there, but the proactive crediting is designed First of all, to be a massive incentive to customers that don't have any G services at all, that were just doing uh, over the top or bring your own network, they'll suddenly have a massive incentive to have us take over some of those circuits or even procure new ones, right? Because that's how you get to that point. Now, the SLAs around HA are very, very specific, right? Because that's 100% availability. It's not five nines, it's not six nines. It's got an entire slew of things around it, but it is site level. And we have to certify it as HA. Just because you have two DS3s doesn't necessarily mean that one goes north and one goes east. Or even if they do go north and they go east, I'll look on the Pathfinder fiber tool and see that they go to the same central office. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we do have to certify the HA side. But every single service we provide does have guarantees. But for the 100% availability and for proactive crediting, it does have to be Maser G procured. Wait, is there still, a I mean, come on, that's still, that's still crazy. <laughs> Ray, another question that we have coming in, is there a minimum customer size in order to be a Maser G customer? Yeah, so that's always been uh, the question. We still need more than one location, right? We're still not interested in a single dental office, right, to this, to this point in time. Um, they still need to be multi-location and they still need to be multi-service. And in some cases, right, we can now do retail, for example. We never did retail before, right? We now can be competitive in retail, right? But if it's literally three Burger Kings and they're on the same block, that's not gonna be nearly as much of a fit as if it's like 60 in the state of Illinois, right? So there are there is still a sweet spot that's out there and I know we're going to do follow-up training on the Zenith program and on some of the incentives around the partner side. And I definitely think that we should put in some sweet spot training as well because the sweet spot has gotten a lot bigger, but it's not encompassing the entire universe. 
Ray, is there a place where they can find a list of all of the SLAs? Yeah, so this, Pathfinder? this is this is a uh, this is a brand new service that's there. They will all be published. They, these are available to new customers only right now, right? We are in process right now of working on how we contractually can cover existing customers, right? That's a little bit more complicated than you might think. Um, but yes, they're absolutely going to be published and your account managers or your channel uh, managers can get you advanced. I believe, I, Ray, I believe they're in the right to win. Um, ah, yes, the right the to win, portal. of course. Yeah. I got you covered. Ah, bingo, that's great. <laughs> oh, Jim is gonna love you for saying that. Oh, Florence is gonna love you. You're gonna get, you're gonna get flowers get and beer. Get on the portal, folks. You're gonna get flowers and beer. I, I believe, well, I cheated. Florence kind of gave me the hint. But um, what? another good question, what's a good question to start the conversation about SD-WAN, SLAs, cost benefits, et cetera? That question comes from Kathy. Well, so the number one thing, about SLAs is people hate them. They hate them. They hate the way they, all the, the hoops they have to hop through. They, they hate the way that they're, they're, they're typically not very much money. Uh, the carrier really doesn't have that much skin in the game, so to speak. Certainly not proactively and certainly not 100%, right? This really changes the game when it comes to really relying on a third party to provide cloud connectivity, right? Because your internal resources, even though they can go get Direct Connect from 365 or they can go procure those others, they don't want to be responsible for that. So having somebody actually go do that as a broker and guaranteeing it can really change the game. The other thing I'll tell you is that a lot of companies out there today are unhappy with the configurations they have. They have firewall appliances that they're not being that are not being used correctly. They have over reporting, they have under reporting, they have a lack of integration between legacy and PLS providers and moving to SD WAN. There's complexity, there's BGP issues. We can solve a little bit of it or all of it, right? We we have the ability to do that. And one thing I didn't talk about today, because you were really, really strict on how many slides I could have, was where the co-management ends. And we actually define it based on the OSI model. So we could say layers one through three, uh, we're responsible for, layers four and above, you're responsible for. And the reason that we have this true co-management solution is because it's the portal, it's all in the portal. So I can track and see every single change that's happened, whether it's an AI change or a human being change or a customer change, right? I can see that, I've got a comprehensive view and we can actually do true co-management. We have more questions coming let me, in. Let me go through the spiffs and then we'll go back to the questions. Can we do that? Yeah, for sure. Okay, awesome. First and foremost, I just started my third decade. Major G's in our third decade. We just turned 20, so we're in our third decade. <laughs> we're in the 3.0 uh, revolution of, of SD-WAN because we're in the third major version of it. We're in our third step on a five-step journey to truly autonomous networking. Three is the magic number, okay? If you guys remember Schoolhouse Rock, three is the magic number. Okay, I'm not a singer, all right? But anyway, De La Soul and everything else. We are doing 3X on SD-WAN in honor of our third decade uh, up until December 31st, 2020, and 3X on UCAS, okay? These are 3X, 3X. There's a ton of rules and conditions. I'm not the guy to ask any of those questions to, but we will be happy to provide you all of that information but I'm not saying a word about what counts and what doesn't count or who, all those other kind of stuff. That's purely Florence, <laughs> et cetera, that's out there. But here's where you can find the information on the 3X and the 3X. Now, in addition to that, okay, outside of the Major G Partner Program, I decided yesterday that I'm going to give away a PlayStation 5, a 10 teraflop PlayStation 5 release date serial number manufactured in Japan, not China, uh, basically on a pre-order to whoever brings us the largest deal by December 1st. Now, it's my PlayStation, so I get to come up with whatever rules it is, right? And I'm talking purely the biggest MRR. That's it. It's super simple. doesn't matter what products it is, et cetera. Between the people that are actually on this call, okay, and I know who you are. I can see you. I see a bunch of Major G people, too. I say, oh, yeah, we, we, I have that list, right? You have an opportunity in addition to the 3X side promotions, in addition to reinvigorating and introducing your customers, you're going to personally get my PlayStation 5. And by the way, I'm not going to open it. 
I'm not going to get greasy fingers on it or anything like that. I will ship it directly to you, and you'll have it by Christmas. That is my promo. I made that up myself. Oh, right. That's awesome, right? I'm so excited. I mean, I may just have to throw in a deal. Just kidding, of course, everybody. Um, especially with, with everything that you presented today in terms of your services. Here's another question for you. It comes from Maryland. Is there a Masergy lip building list um, where we can target our marketing efforts? No, because Masergy is not a lit building company. Uh, we are truly a software defined network player. And we use uh, 200 last mile providers. What I would encourage you to use for a lit building list is Pathfinder because Pathfinder will tell you every single building and all the types of fiber. Uh, but I actually procure private line connectivity for MPLS and VPLS, uh, as well as DIA across any one of 200 providers. And I put guarantees around it. So in most cases, I extend it all the way to their LAN. I handle that part too. But it, used, it is a third party for that last mile, the part from PE to CE in the MPLS nomenclature. And it is a third party if I'm procuring broadband, wireless, wired, lasers, all those other types of services. So I actually am procuring third party services for that, but I'm putting guarantees around it. So let me flip that question because I know we've done um, what, you know, one of my channel managers actually on the team did a M MDF, a marketing campaign with one of your channel managers. And so I, my recommendation is to reach out to, if you don't know who your Maester G channel manager is, reach out to your channel manager at Avant and talk to them because they certainly will help you with marketing campaigns and marketing efforts and upselling your base, et cetera, et cetera. So um, perfect. Thanks for pulling that up. Um, we're here to help and support and uh, do you definitely want to have the conversation with everything that we presented? Any final thoughts? Because we're coming down to the end of the hour. Oh, for me or for the people in the audience? Both. Okay. Well, first of all, I just want to let you know I'm on vacation today. First of all, so just, <laughs> just, just really, really, really feel for the fact that not only am I working on vacation, but I'm also giving away my PlayStation, okay? And I really, really encourage you to rethink about how you think about Maestro G because just like Tesla, it's a kick-ass product and it's loaded with features, but it's now available to the mass markets and you could actually go chase much more opportunities and we're gonna be price competitive on those as well. We're, we are not going to lose deals over service level agreements ever again and we're not gonna lose deals over being ridiculously priced ever again. So we wanna be competitive in the marketplace. We wanna be competitive around service level agreements. We wanna be absolutely kick-ass when it comes to project management and implementation and billing and all that other stuff that people don't like to talk about. And we welcome an opportunity to prove it. That's great, Ron. Uh, Ray, while adding value to the customer, which is something that Macergy's withstood the test of time, I actually used to call you the Neiman Marcus of bandwidth. <laughs> so just to relate it to. I, I prefer Tesla, Tesla, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now I'll switch to Tesla. Okay. And so, um, well, appreciate your time. Definitely appreciate the partnership with Macergy. We've been friends for a very long time and a platinum partner for a long time. And, um, Let's continue on that path and, and sell some of these product sets because if you're not doing it, someone else is. So let's work together on, and, on winning the, the PlayStation 5 by December 1st. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Check out our partner events page for more of our great spotlights, battle briefings, and register for that retreat. We all need it. Hey, Jude. Thank you. Don't make it bad.